Okay, in this video, I'm going to walk you through the process of removing your factory rear fender on your 2017 Suzuki SV650 and installing the Vagabond Motorsports Fender Illuminator Kit. Before we get into the step-by-step -step install procedure, I just want to go over some of the key details for the Vagabond Motorsports Fender Illuminator Kit for the new SV650. So the main part is going to be, uh, this is totally unique to the SV650, you can see the top plate is contoured to fit specifically in that kind of rear recess in the tail section of the motorcycle. It's going to be set up to reuse the OEM license plate light and turn signals. It'll also be set up to accept um, through this larger rearward hole in the turn signal sides uh, aftermarket turn signals that use that 10 millimeter stud. It's set up to be a totally plug and play installation, no splicing required if you reuse all the OEM lights. Um, the license plate panel is going to have slots to accept a wide variety of license plates, has rubber bumpers to minimize license plate cracking or buzzing. Um, lastly, uh, the top panel also does have in this rectangular cutout um, the ability to reuse the factory grommet, which is a pretty high quality unit as well, so that you can seal out weather as well as reduce chafing on your wires. Kit also includes a full hardware um, pack in which there are four aluminum spacers, four stainless steel M6 um, screws, as well as four M6 lock washers. Then you're going to get two shorter. Um, plastic thread cutting screws and those are going to replace um, some long ones on the factory bike to reconnect the license plate light. All the parts here made in the USA, uh, really high quality finishes, um, the license plate or the fender eliminator is coated in a UV resistant satin black powder coat and the idea here is to make it look as factory as possible when this, all these components are reinstalled. Now as for tools you're going to need to complete this installation, you'll need a 4mm Allen wrench, a Phillips screwdriver, an uh, 8mm wrench or a crescent wrench, and a 10mm socket in a ratchet with hopefully some version of an extension on it. Now you don't have to use exactly these tools, these two in particular are actually included in the Suzuki toolkit under the seat. Um, if you've got them I recommend a longer 4mm T-handle, it'll make installation much easier, kind of a longer Phillips, and then for this installation video we're going to use a power driver with a 10 millimeter socket. So this is actually what you need in terms of um, these four tools. If you've got something a little bit better, feel free to use those. Okay, so the first part of the installation procedure is going to be to remove the single piece seat. That's going to be done with the key in the slot on the left side of the tail section of the bike. Uh, rotate the key, pop the seat rearward, and set that aside. Now once you got the seat off, all we have to do is remove those three connectors they're under this large white connector. So you kind of scoot this connector to the side and you'll see there's three small connectors, uh, a gray, a black, and a white one all underneath. And before we release those, there's one reusable wire tie uh, right on this cross brace. And we're gonna loosen that. Uh, and you loosen it by lifting the tab up and pulling it uh, out, like so. And so set that aside, we'll use it on when we reinstall everything, but that gives you a little more clearance to go about disconnecting things. And you'll disconnect, so that was the gray, um, and you just lift on the tab, there's like a little tab on the front side of the connector that you lift, and you get them all off. So gray, black, and white small two pin connectors all get disconnected. Once you've got that done, you're ready to take the factory rear fender off the motorcycle. Now to get this factory rear fender off, there's four 10 millimeter hex head bolts that are fairly clearly uh, visible underneath the tail section of the motorcycle. And you're gonna take your 10 millimeter socket and remove those. And then once those are out, the only thing you have to do is guide out the three electrical connectors you just disconnected. So help those out of the rectangular slot and uh, take your rear fender uh, to the table to break it down. Now once you've got the factory rear fender off the motorcycle, one important thing to notice is that you're gonna reuse uh, the OEM or the, the whatever the dealer supplied with for your license plate itself. So in this case, it's Phillips head screws, 10 millimeter lock nuts on the backside. Um, this kit does not include additional hardware for securing the license plate if you don't have it. Um, one other thing to notice on the factory fender is that the license plate light is pretty wobbly. Um, we're going to fix that 
on the installation of the fender eliminator kit by removing this spacer and it's going to tighten up everything it's going to appear a lot more high quality if you flip the factory rear fender upside down you'll see that there are two eight millimeter nuts for the license or the turn signals that we're going to remove and then the turn signals will pull out and then there's two phillips head screws that hold in the license plate light we're also going to remove those and we're going to reuse most of this hardware uh, to start with I find it easiest to just take the whole wire bundle um, in its grommet and pull it through um, backwards um, into the kind of underside of the fender. At which point you can um, start to feed um, one connector at a time through the grommet. Uh, and as you get connectors through, it'll become increasingly easy. Um, but we're going to keep this grommet. So set it aside, it's going to go right back into the fender eliminator. Um, so pull the connectors through this kind of plastic bridge, um, at which point you're ready to remove all your lights. So if you take an 8mm wrench on the um, small flange nuts for the turn signals, you can r remove those <clears throat> and then simply pull out the um, turn signals right and left and that was the wrong way so this is going to be all reused hardware for the fender eliminator kit so pull out right and left um, and then take your Phillips screwdriver and remove the two fairly long These are these plastic thread cutting screws because these screw right into plastic bosses on the license plate light. Um, they're pretty long on this, so we're going to remove those screws. And then it's probably easiest to see it this way. You remove this whole stack. Um, and it's going to be uh, the license plate light and the spacer. So pull the license plate light through the spacer and you can set the spacer aside. We're not going to reuse that. Um, the last bit is we are going to peel this big rubber bumper, or sorry, grommet, out of the factory or fender because uh, we're also going to reuse that. Now once you've got all these components out, the one kind of key thing to know is you can see these long thread cutting screws were used to attach the license plate light because of that big spacer. And because we don't want that spacer anymore, we're going to use the two shorter thread cutting screws that are supplied with the kit. Uh, we should, we will reuse these kind of nice large fender washers, so um, take them off the uh, long bolts and put them on those short bolts that are supplied with the kit. At which point you're ready to reassemble everything into the fender eliminator. So once you get your factory fender all broken down, it's ready to reinstall lots of components back into the fender eliminator. So take start with your big grommet for your license plate light. You can see there's a tiny little notch um, on what should be the lower portion and that's just a weep hole to allow any sort of condensation that may collect in there to actually drain out. So it's important that that kind of point down towards the license plate. Um, start by pulling that guy through and then kind of just forcing the, the two kind of actually flange portions in. And it's going to look a little ugly at first but if you peel up on the back side all the uh, that flange portion should end up with something that's pretty smooth and just you can kind of manually rearrange it until it looks um, just how you like it and then feed the license plate connector which is the white two pin connector through the fender eliminator and obviously make sure the light points down towards your license plate and you can seat that and make sure that doesn't kind of pinch the grommet um, anywhere during that process. Um, once you've got that ready, you can see <clears throat> those plastic uh, bosses kind of protrude almost all the way through um, the grommet. And you're going to take your two, so these are the shorter, the supplied thread cutting screws and the bigger washers that were part of the OEM fender and use those to reconnect everything. And so because we use a thicker material, then the factory or fender, 
when you tighten this whole assembly up, and you can tighten it until it bottoms out, you'll feel the washer actually collapse or squeeze that rubber portion of the grommet until it actually bottoms out on the plastic boss. At which point you don't need to go ultra tight. It'll just be a, a meaningful change in the torque from when you're squeezing the rubber to when you're done and you're actually compressed against that boss. What you'll notice is that when you're done, there's really no more, um, kind of call it, uh, slop in that. And it's nice and tight, but it's still reusing that grommet in a very kind of meaningful fashion. Okay, so once you've got your license plate light on, you're ready to install your turn signals. Now we're gonna go ahead and install the OEM turn signals back into this for the full installation, but what I wanted to show is that if you've got, you wanna to switch to an LED unit, like these kind of cheapos from Amazon, you can use this uh, rearward hole, which is sized to accept the M10 10 millimeter stud that most of these aftermarket turn signals actually use. So they will also come with a big acorn uh, or flange nut to secure it, but you're really just gonna thread it through um, and then maybe once it's on the motorcycle use, um, you can loosen it and clock it appropriately and then tighten it up. Now, a couple things to note is uh, we are not including in our kit um, any sort of uh, connectors, other so you can see these come with bullets and it's gonna be up, for, up to you to uh, either splice on the factory connector um, or use T-taps or whatever you're comfortable doing. So. We, we give that provision in the fender limiter design, but otherwise we're not gonna give you hardware to finish that part up. So if we go back to the OEM turn signals, we'll start with the right. <clears throat> One thing to notice is that the right is gonna be the black connector, and obviously these things look awfully similar right to left. The easiest way is to either look on the text on the lens itself, or flip it over and you'll see there's actually a white pad printed um, set of numbers and letters and that is going to point towards the ground so it's more or less hidden. But the way these install is you thread the um, electrical connector through the larger rearward hole and then just thread the or push the stud through the smaller front hole. Then you're going to reuse the flange nuts that secured these on the factory rear fender and tighten them up. And this is the, again the eight millimeter um, box end wrench. And this one's ratcheting one, you don't need that. Um, but one thing, I, two things actually to note. One is don't over tighten these. Um, we don't want you to just snap that stud off, in which case a replacement OEM signal is fairly expensive. The other one is don't tighten it all the way right away because what you're gonna wanna do, there's a little bit of slop in here when it's a little loose to really dial in the angle at which these lights point rearward. And so once it's on the motorcycle, it'll be much easier to tell visually what looks good and that you can, you can snug that up. So don't go too tight on those right away and don't go too tight in general because you will risk um, ripping that stud out of the turn signal and or just shearing the stud because it's only an M5. So there's absolutely no reason to go overboard with this. And if you just got a... Uh, regular old box then that'll work just fine like this. Okay so once you've got the turn signals on and at least reasonably tight um, when we'll go back and we'll, we'll snug those up once we get them perfectly aligned on the motorcycle. The last bit's going to be to run the three wire looms through this rectangular hole and through this grommet. And the grommet is what we pulled out of the factory rear fender and I would recommend we we keep it. And the way I would start and this is uh, it's a little tricky, but it's really not that bad. Is start with the white connector, which is your tail light, um, and thread that over the grommet first, and then we'll we'll thread both of them through the hole at the same time. Um, the the reason I say start with the uh, tail light is because it's kind of it's got the most direct wire path. It's going to be the hardest to work with after the fact. So once you get, so you kind of have to just start with the grommet by pushing it in to the hole and working your way around. It's got a little tab on it um, that'll help kind of pull it through, but kind of work your around, you'll see, you'll get it set in. And then the last kind of tricky-ish bit is gonna be to pulling it tight. And so you'll see the 
when all said and done, the <clears throat> when you're tight, the license plate light is going to go kind of like directly into that grommet, which is nice, but um, it doesn't give you a whole lot of room to run the rest of them. So pull it back a little bit, and then we'll tighten everything up as a unit. Um, so once you've got one through and the grommet in its hole, I'd recommend trying to, on either side of the license plate light, um, feed the connectors for the turn signals through. And admittedly this is a little, can be a little tricky depending if you get just the right angle on them. But you can see we've got one of the connectors coming through. Um, and part of this is it's a little harder to do it on camera. But if you can grab In this case, we've got the right signal and pull him through. So we've got two through, and then we'll see if we can get that third and final one in. So again, give yourself a little slack by pulling the cables back, and then so the <clears throat> in this case the gray um, or the left signal, you just got to start it into the grommet and then flip it over and see if you can push things around to get your connector in there. And because this grommet has got a little bit of a jog to it, it's not a slam dunk, but it's not... There we go. So, got your three connectors through. We want them to take their little shiny black plastic casing with them. Um, and then tighten, snug them up a little bit. And one thing you'll see is once you get, so we'll pull that license plate light through. Uh, again, tighten everything back up. Because you should end up with kind of like a seamless transition between um, one boot and the other. So that's actually really good from a weather sealing standpoint. And then you've got a nice um, grommet up here. And so once you've got that together as a unit, then uh, we're ready to put it back on the motorcycle. So the fender eliminator is going to go back onto the motorcycle using the hardware provided in the kit, the new hardware, not the old hardware. And the order of operation, so there's four of each piece. There's going to be uh, a long button head. You're going to put the lock washer on the button head through the fender eliminator. And then in between the fender eliminator, you're going to place, uh, in between the fender eliminator and the motorcycle, you're going to place the uh, aluminum spacer and that's just going to make sure the fit um, is as it should be and so if you're missing a component you're going to draw the fender limiter too high up into that pocket and stuff's going to start to hit so make sure you use the spacers um, and the way that it's going to be easiest to do this is going to be to set up the two call it the two front holes first and that's going to be by putting um, a washer over two bolts and then a spacer over to over the front two, and uh, two is a kind of a workable number. So you can kind of with both hands um, hold them like this, and eventually move to a tool on one of the bolts. And what that's going to allow you to do is to get your front two at least a couple threads in, and then you'll be able to move to the back. And so we'll go through that procedure once we're we're on the motorcycle. So once you've got your fully assembled fender eliminator ready to get on the motorcycle, um, populate the front two holes with the hardware and the spacers um, and kind of hold them with your two fingers. And then what I would recommend is transition to one hand, kind of like so, so that you can start threading um, electrical connectors. we will start with uh, the long tail light because that's the one with the most slack. And the main thing when you're threading them in, in is what you want to make sure they end up forward of that crossbar, otherwise they're going to get all kind of tangled up. Um, so once you've got three electrical connectors through, um, you're going to want to go back to the um, underside and line up your 
your holes on those threaded bosses. And so you should be able to get the first two in only a couple threads. You actually don't need to go too much. And the idea is that you kind of allow the fender, liner, fender illuminator to droop down a bit. And the reason we want to do that is so that you can move on to the rear two. And again, I would get those um, at a, as a pair rather than try to do them one at a time. It's just much easier that way. Um, or at least it's easier to get all four. So again, get your um, thread and or your screw and your lock washer up and then the spacer on top of that. And then we'll do this last fourth one. And the fourth one is gonna feel like the hardest for sure. To get everything up. Um, and one more spacer. At which point you do the same thing and you grab uh, one of the two with your Allen tool. And this is where having the long, uh, the longer, the, the long T handle as opposed to a short L is going to be um, just massively useful. Uh, and so you don't want any sort of tightness in the threads as it's going up, which means you've probably cross-threaded it. They should all go up and you should just feel the lock washers compress and then you'll just feel you bottom out the spacers against those threaded bosses and then give it a nice snug. These are M6s so they're not um, too small. They can take a good amount of torque but because there's lock washers on here because what you're bolting up is so, sh uh, so light um, there's no need to go overboard or really torque these to their max. Um, so hand tight with the T-handle um, is more than enough. So once you get those four tight, it's time to move to the top side of the seat again and reconnect all your electrical. One of the last things we have to do is, is rewire, um, reconnect all the connectors and just like when we took it apart, there are those three um, two pin connectors that are uh, running alongside the shifter side of the frame rail and uh, simple to connect until they just push till they click. Um, and because you've made everything a little bit more compact, um, you have a little bit of extra um, wiring. And so if we reuse uh, this uh, reusable wire tie that was running off this crossbar, we can do a pretty good job of kind of managing that extra. And so um, thread it through. And it goes underneath this metal crossbar, just like that. So what I would say is collect the three looms and start, just get it, you'll hear it click a couple times and that'll let you know that it's at least uh, secured. Um, at which point you can kind of orient the three looms how you'd like them and tighten them down. The main thing here is that you wanna keep um, the wiring away from the seat latch. We'll finish off the top side of the installation by reinstalling the rider and passenger seat. With that you just hook in the front little teeth, um, push it forward, and then uh, push the back down until you hear it click. Alright, so at this point we're pretty much complete with the installation. One thing we, we need to close out is these guys are still a little loose because um, as, I, as we talked about when it was on the benches, there's no point in tightening them until we get the angle just right. So now that it's on the motorcycle, you can use your eight millimeter uh, box end or, or open end wrench, um, get it on top of that, that nut and you can, if it's loose, you can kind of clock it like that. So at this point, your eye is gonna be your best judge, but it should also flow with the lines of the fender eliminator rather well, um, at which point you can tighten um, that eight millimeter nut. We'll do that on the other side, and it's important that they match, obviously. Um, and then go ahead and tighten that. And just keep a hand on the turn signal while you're tightening that nut so that you do not 
um, put that tightening force into tilting your turn signal. So once you got those guys nice and solid, pretty much done and it's ready for a quick systems check. So it's worth it to make sure all your wiring was correct, turn the bike on, make sure that the left turn signal, right turn signal will work, they flash at the right speed, and then obviously you want very nice uh, uniform license plate illumination with the factory light. So that all looks really good at this point. So once you've got the turn signals angled exactly how you want them, um, the installation for this part is totally complete. So you can see, I'll give you a couple more views, walk around the bike. There's very minimal gaps to the body lines of the existing motorcycle. Um, we've got the license plate back on there with the dealer supplied hardware. See those grommets are doing their job, kind of keeping the, the wires really well managed and hopefully very well sealed. Um, our goal here is to create as close to a kind of OEM grade modification as possible. I'd like to thank you guys for watching this video. Our parts can be purchased direct on our website, www.vagabondmotorsports.com, as well as Amazon for your Prime members and eBay. Thanks a lot.